Let's get it. We are very best friends. We have a lot of conversations. I miss him in my bed, I miss him in my house, I miss him. But I'm not being treated the way I deserve to be treated here. How many people saw that episode and said, finally, finally Janelle's understanding. Finally, girl, you're learning your value. You recognize what you're bringing to this relationship and you are unappreciated, right? This is where I was. When I watched that episode, Janelle was hitting, and I got to tell you, right now, I know a lot of folks are kind of disappointed with season 18, but for me, it's hitting on all cylinders. Why? Because finally, these ladies are being honest. Finally, we're getting the real tea. Finally, we're seeing them stand up for themselves and stop taking this shit that this dude is trying to shovel upon them and trying to give them just because he thinks he can. Finally, we are seeing the evolution of Janelle, Christine, and hopefully I think next episode we're going to see the evolution of Mary. Now, before I get into this, because I think that this is uh, worthwhile talking about, I would simply ask that if you guys are getting anything from my content, you consider giving me that thumbs up. It really helps me out, lets me know that you guys are digging what I'm doing and that you guys are liking the messaging. And hopefully you can share this content with somebody who may need it or need to have this type of conversation. Also, if you are watching the videos, you're enjoying the videos and you're not yet subscribed, what are you doing? (laughs) Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel out. It helps me out. And hey, who doesn't want to help a brother out? Go ahead and give me that HBO special, which stands for Help a Brother Out Special, by clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell for notifications, and you will be notified when I drop content just like this. And I plan on dropping more content this week, so look out for it, be ready for it, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, and you will be on your way. (laughs) All right, let's get it. And the first thing I would say is, in this particular clip that I showed earlier, We get to see Janelle finally vocalizing her value. She recognizes that she's bringing something to this relationship. She's not a pick me. She's not a beg along. She's not some vagabond who was walking the streets and all of a sudden Cody took pity on her and decided to bring her into the family because she was so sorry looking. She brought value to the family. And more importantly, With regard to her relationship with Cody, she brought value to that relationship. And because he didn't recognize her value, that doesn't mean that her value has been diminished. That does not mean that all of a sudden she isn't contributing what she has been contributing. Her sacrifices don't mean anything. The one thing that I would say in a situation like this is that you can find yourself in a situation where you're sacrificing, you're giving everything you have to give, you're, you're making all kinds of decisions that are impacting you, impacting your children and everybody you care about around you for the betterment of somebody else or something else. And this also goes to people who work in jobs and you're killing yourself on that job trying to make the supervisor, you know, make their life easier. And in some cases... Hell, more often than not, you will find yourself making sacrifices, giving up things, going without things for somebody, and they will take from you and take from you and take from you. And at the end of the day, after you have given everything you could possibly give, after you have sacrificed everything you can sacrifice, as you, after you have forsaken your children for the sake of somebody else, they will look you square in your eye and tell you that you have not given enough, that you have not done enough, and that you are not worthy of their time, energy, and effort, and they will dismiss you. And, and you will be distraught and upset and, and crushed. But the reality of it is, is that when you start to recognize that somebody is taken from you and not feeding into you the way you're feeding into them, then you have to realize that because you took that bad situation yesterday and you're in that bad situation today, that does not mean that you are guaranteed to be in that bad situation tomorrow. You don't have to keep taking it. 
You don't have to keep enduring and trying to struggle through because this is what you did for the last 20 years. You can make a change. One of the things that I had always uh, told folks, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm always grateful for every day I'm given because every day I'm here, that's an opportunity for me to not only realize my value and the contributions I can make to the world, but it's also an opportunity for me to change the things that I don't like. As long as I wake up every morning, I have an opportunity to change. If I see something I don't like about me, I can work on that thing. Or I can learn to live with it, deal with it, or whatever I need to do. But every day is an opportunity. And just because Janelle found herself in this situation doesn't mean she has to stay in this situation. And this is kind of the, uh, the part where it gets a little sticky. Because as we saw in this episode, when Cody came in, he came in fluttered around. He was happy as, 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 a, <laughs> as a fat kid with cake. I'm telling you, he was happy as hell. Walking in, everything was cool. There were no problems because in his mind, he assumed that everything was going to go back to the way it was. He thought that he was good, golden. He could yell at Janelle, holler at Janelle, scream at her, cuss her out, walk out of her house, dismiss her, dismiss her kids, whether it's her boys because he didn't like what they had to say to his wife or his her daughter because, you know, she happens to be living in the same house with, with the woman he's having a disagreement with. He, he thought it was okay. In fact, let's take a look. And I want you to look specifically on his body language when he comes in and he first greets Janelle when he sees her. There's not a care in the world. This man is not somebody who is concerned that his wife has decided to make a different choice. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Long time no see. Oh. You gonna give me a hug? Me. Yeah. How are you? Good. Mm, not a care in the world. Ooh, cold water. <laughs> Ooh, cold water. Yeah, not as cold as that shoulder you're about to get, player. <laughs> Are you <laughs> the idea that he's just gonna walk in there and there's no problem, no fuss, no muss. Hey, how you doing, girl? Nothing happened. It's just Tuesday. How's everything going? Yeah, forget the fact that I cussed you out. And the idea that this is all happened. And that what this tells me is, is that the words uh, cycle of abuse like this is something that's kicked around and usually it's meant for something that's a little more serious. And I don't want to diminish that. But even in lesser instances of certain violations, whether it's uh, emotional, uh, physical or whatever the case may be in, in, in toxic relationships, there is a cycle. And usually what happens, there's a peaceful period where everything is cool. Then there's a moment of tension. There's the explosion where things happen. Words are said, you know, the big argument. Then there's the point of reconciliation. <laughs> and then you go back to the, the whole cycle. You just repeat itself. And you guys are just arguing and making up and then arguing and making up and then arguing. And on and on it goes. And what this tells me is, is that from Cody's reaction, this is something that they're just used to doing. They're used to having these types of disagreements. Maybe it wasn't as bad and maybe this time it's a little different. And I can tell you that one of the things that makes it a little different is the fact that <laughs> fortunately, unfortunately <laughs> for Cody, Janelle has had the opportunity to see one of the sister wives, Christine, leave the family and not only leave the family in triumph, but she's actually winning. Christine is winning in life. She's happy. She's enjoying herself. The world didn't come to an end. Things didn't crash to a halt. Christine has been able to transition from her marriage, which was a neglectful toxic environment for her, her spirit, her soul, and her children. And she was able to transmute that into something better for herself and for her kids. And she gets to be a better, stronger role model for her daughters in particularly, but for her boy as well. And Janelle, the smart woman that she is, 
She sees which way the water is going and she wants a little taste of that. She she wants to be refreshed. (laughs) So she's willing to leave this joker alone. Now let's take a look at Cody's response because Cody hit the nail on the head. At the very end of the episode, when he was talking about, you know, Janelle had presented him with the idea that she no longer wanted to be in this relationship, this is what Cody had to say. I kind of thought that we would reconcile right here. And mm. she's like, no, I'm, I'm enjoying my independence, this freedom too much, so I want to stay separated. See, this is that point. Like I said... He was completely relaxed. I thought we were going to get back together. I was just coming through because this is what I'm supposed to do. Come by, you know, kiss her, tell her that she's kind of cute and be joyful and happy and easygoing and show her, you know, what's going on. And when he sits there and asks her, hey, how you doing? He expects her to break down, cry, or he expects her to be upset. He certainly doesn't expect her to say she's okay. And even when she says that she's okay, he gives her the look like, yeah, right, you're okay. How are you okay when you're not with me? Playboy player, Cody Brown. Like, you know what I mean? Like that creepy, cringy ass (laughs) portrayal that he has as far as she's concerned. And one of the things that we have to remember about this is that you have to be able to draw lines for your relationships. Not everybody is meant to be in your life your whole life. Some people are coming to your life and they're supposed to show you or teach you one thing. They're supposed to give you an experience and then they're supposed to move on. But because of loyalty, uh, because we may misunderstand the purpose of that person's presence in our life, we may try to include them in parts of our lives that they should no longer be included in. When their time has come, we have to be ready to let these people go. And I'm not saying that you have to abandon everybody. And I know that a lot of YouTubers, myself included, may even come off very cavalier when we talk about Uh, breaking relationships up or people leaving relationships or deciding to do something else. But what I am saying is this, it may be very difficult and I understand that it's going to be hard. There are times when you look at your relationship and say, I don't know if I can leave because it's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. I may not be able to find somebody. At least now I have somebody, even though this person may not be treating me well, this person may not recognize my value. This person may not appreciate my contribution. At least I have somebody. But here's the thing. And here's one of the things that I really, really genuinely like about Janelle. And I've often said this about myself. I don't mind being alone. You know why? Because I like me. I like who I am. And I like my company. I enjoy my company. I can sit in a room by myself all day and be fine with it. Okay, and I'm also the guy that can, you know, jump in the middle of the room, be the life of the party and get the party started. The first one on the dance floor, first one gripping the mic up to do karaoke, whatever the case may be, I'm that guy. However, when push comes down to shove, as a general rule, don't ever value somebody more than you value yourself. Don't ever put yourself in a situation where You have to decide that you'll play yourself down or you'll uh, uh, take away from your own humanity to prop somebody up to make them feel better about themselves. That doesn't do you any favors and it most certainly doesn't do them any favors. They need to be around the full-blown, fully-powered, fully-charged you. They need to experience the full you. If they can't experience the full you, they can't handle the full you, they can't handle who you are and what you're about, then that's not a person who is there for you. What you need is somebody who is going to support you. And and when I say, again, when I say that you should be drawing lines and you should be uh, deciding things that are good for you, I'm not saying this cavalierly. I'm not just saying just throw people away because, you know, they don't necessarily fit this or they don't fit that or, you know, they, they don't meet up to a certain standard. What I am saying is this. If you see something in somebody and you say, look, what you're doing doesn't make me comfortable. What you're doing doesn't feed into my life, and it's not something I appreciate. I I want you to change this thing because it doesn't work for me. Now, if you see 
that that person is changing that thing or they're trying to change that thing, then that means something because that's somebody who is investing in you. That is somebody who cares enough about you and is hearing what you have to say that they have taken into account your feelings in this relationship. However, if that person hears what you're saying and then they can still look you in the face and say, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever I want to do anyway. I'm going to keep doing, you know, seeing this, these people. I'm going to keep hanging out with this girl from work. I'm going to keep having her call me on my phone. I'm going to keep texting her. I'm going to, when when my phone ring, I'm going to keep jumping up out of my seat and running out the room so I can have private conversations, even though it makes you feel uncomfortable because I don't give a shit what you think. Then you have to take that into consideration. In this next clip, I want to listen to Janelle as she lays out the things that are important to her and the things that Cody refuses to hear from her when she's trying to save this marriage and this relationship with him. Listen, I'm pretty independent. I don't need a lot from him. But when it comes down to where he just all of a sudden doesn't want to be a father to my kids because they disagree with him. Mm. That sort of changes the cost-benefit equation for me in this marriage. And that, my friends, is something that is music to my ears. Okay? That's music to my ears. Because what that tells me is that if you're a woman and you are single, like there was one point where during the tell-off season 17 where Cody had said, Oh, she has to tell these lies because if a man sees that she had a good man and he didn't treat her right, then he won't be able to be around her and she won't be able to get another guy or some foolishness like that. Here's my thing. As a guy, if I'm walking through this world as a single dude and I was a single guy and I was in the market looking and I said, came across a a woman or a young lady with children and she didn't take that responsibility seriously, then to me, that would be unattractive. If she allowed men to come into her life and mistreat her children, that would be unattractive to me. And And this is them not being my kids. If these are her children, And she's allowing men to come into her life to mistreat them. I would not find that attractive at all. I would have issues with it. And when it comes to people like Cody, he doesn't understand that factor. When Janelle draws this line, this is something that she's saying is important to her. Her children are important to her. This is something she's sharing with Cody that, look, if you want to be with me, if you want this relationship to continue, these are the changes that you need to make in order for us to be together. And at that point, Cody doesn't say, you know what, Janelle, you're right. Not only are you right, because there's a couple places where he could say you're right. One, you're right. I need to take make I, I need to respect these kids because I want this relationship to continue. That's the easy softball one. But deeper than that, you're right. I need to take care of these kids, not just because they're your kids and I want to have a relationship with you, but I need to take care of these kids because these are my kids too. These are my children too. I am responsible for them just like you are. And I need to make sure that these relationships are strong. Not just the relationship that we have, but the relationship I'm going to have with them. That, my friend, would have been attractive to her. That if You talks about like the washerboard abs and the nice pecs and the shoulders and stuff. That would have been the most attractive thing he could have said to her at that time. That he was he cared about his kids and he wanted to have a strong relationship with his kids because that is what's important to her. And it's sad that this man is 50 damn years old and he doesn't understand that basic thing. He doesn't understand that a woman's children are important to her. <laughs> this is this is something that you learn early in life. 
And apparently he skipped all over that chapter. <laughs> he didn't he didn't read that book at all. He just passed it in the library and wanted to go straight to the coloring books, apparently. Okay? And it's ridiculous. Again, if he can't make these minor changes, and this is something that he should already know for himself, it is recognition of the fact that he doesn't know for himself, and this is something that you have to take into account. But if this is something that you're saying is a red line or a concern, and he can't take the time to listen to you or at least address your concerns, then he doesn't give a damn about you. In which case, you need to take a strong, firm look at whether this guy is worth your time. And I submit to you that if he's not listening to your concerns and he only wants to be there for the good times and the fun times, because, you know, life with me is easy. And that's why the relationship works, because when we sit there together, then everything is fine and we can do whatever we want. And if there were no other problems, we would have a good life. This is something he said to her. But here's the thing. As Janelle said, life is not like that. Life is not simple. Life is not easy. Life throws curveballs at you. Life is one of those situations where one minute you up next minute you getting kicked in the face you don't know what happened life will flip you upside down and and empty your pockets okay that's just how life works and this is where janelle is trying to come in stronger with who she is and what she's about now one of the things that really struck me about the whole thing is that every time cody kind of gets backed into a corner where janelle is trying to express to him what she needs out of a relationship the first thing he says is covid <laughs> oh it's the covid stuff i don't know what's going on it's the covid thing the covid was killing more people than it was just just what hurting people it was hurting relationships that's true but a lot of times covid was hurting relationships because people started to realize because they were in such proximities and they lost a lot of the distractions that life often gives you they had to deal with each other on a fundamental level. And because they had to deal with each other on a fundamental level without distraction, they started to realize that, hey, I don't really get along with this person. In fact, I don't even like this person. That's what COVID did for a lot of people. COVID broke up a lot of relationships. And it wasn't just because of some foolish ass rules. COVID broke up relationships because it did reveal who people were. And it showed that when people were given the opportunity and a chance without any other distractions, I don't have to go to the gym because the gym is closed, can't go to the movies, the supermarket, whatever the case may be, because that's all closed. The only thing I can do is stay in the house, possibly sit on the phone or sit here and talk to the people who live in my house or in Cody's case, go visit somebody else in their house. And I choose not to do it. And you can't say that you've been too busy to do it then what you're saying is that you're making a choice. And one of the th other things that kind of cracked me up in Cody's description as to why this relationship fell back was actually this. That's what was happening with Christine and I. When I would have conversations with her about our relationship, it was too uncomfortable for her. She didn't like having those conversations. And yet she left with me sort of holding the back, never knowing that she was going to leave. She's just making imagine. plans on leaving, having a discussion with people about leaving, telling the kids, <laughs> uh, the adult kids, you told me she had told you she was planning on leaving. <laughs> Look at Janelle. And then, and then she leaves, I'm like, she never told me. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to sit here and prattle on about Christine. How are you going to be in a hot war white <laughs> argument with your wife? <laughs> How are you going to be in a hot war a words argument with your lady and sit there and talk about your ex? <laughs> Could you imagine? And I know this might be come off like it's a monogamous thing. Like they throw around monogamous like it's a slur. Oh, this is a monogamous problem. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine you sitting there talking to your current and they, all they want to do is talk about what their ex did to them? It's not like you were saying like, what's a traumatic experience you had with this other person? Instead, it's like, yeah, I don't like how you treat my kids. Well, let me tell you about Christine and how she surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> get over Christine dude she's gone and the, the insane part about it is he's so worried about arguing and trying to relitigate that breakup that he's about to experience another daggone breakup and this is also part of the problem that I have with a lot of this situation because when I look at Cody and I'm probably going to do another video specifically on Cody and how he entered into this relationship. But when Cody talks about this relationship, particularly when he addresses Christine and he addresses Janelle and even Mary, he doesn't see these women as women. He sees these women as ops. They're opportunities for him. These ladies, he, does, he doesn't miss them. He's going to miss the things that they do for him. 
And there's a very subtle difference in that. When you are absent from somebody's life, they should miss you. They should miss the con- not only the the financial or physical contributions, ladies, the physical contributions that you're giving to that person, but they should miss having you around. Because if they can limit you to one or two things or the benefit that they that you provide when you come around and that's all they see, then you don't mean anything to them. Because even as far as the finances, that can be replaced. If you get the uh, physical, that certainly can be replaced, especially when you're sitting there with Pencil Box Robin, you know, the best customer service in the city. That can be replaced. So you never want yourself, you don't never want to limit yourself to your contribution being this one thing. When he looks at these ladies, he doesn't see the sacrifices and the contributions that they made to his life. He only sees the very short term superficial benefits that he received from them being in his life. And he has gotten himself to a point because he started to take them for granted that he thinks he's actually doing them a favor by allowing them to be around him and give to him. And this is that weird point where I I would give uh, people the shirt off my back. But I won't give the shirt off my back to somebody who just wants to see me naked. There's a difference. When somebody is just okay with you just giving to them, giving to them, giving to them because they know you'll do it. And they don't care. And they have this expectation that you'll do it. And and once you give to them, they're not appreciative of the things that you're giving up to give to them, the sacrifices you're making, the generosity that you bequeath to them. They're not they don't care about any of that. Then that's something that you have to consider when you consider whether this person is somebody who is a permanent fixture in your life or they're just a temporary asset, something that somebody who was sent to you to teach you the thing. And maybe the thing that they were meant to teach you was how to say goodbye how to break a bad relationships off. I do appreciate Janelle's response when it came to this very issue, though. Let's take a listen. Well, my relationship with you is crap because I'm so angry about this divorce. Well, be a man. Be a man. Separate your relationships like you have for our entire plural marriage and pay attention here. And that's one of the craziest things to me. Be a man. (laughs) I totally agree with that. Be a damn man. (laughs) Recognize your situation. He spends his entire time, and every time we watch one of these shows from like early in the se- earlier seasons, in one of these episodes, he'll say something to the effect of, "Oh, you're always talking about this other person, and you're always back talking and backsliding and talking behind somebody's back about one of these other wives and these other ladies, and you don't know how to treat people and all that craziness." One of the things that he's always denied was his participation in talking crap about these other women behind their backs. And we got to see in full display what they were talking about when they said that Cody talks about each one of these ladies to the other ladies. The ironic part about it is the moment Janelle would have jumped in and started throwing shade on Christine and started talking crap about Christine, then when Cody retold this story much later, it would have been all Janelle. It would have been all Janelle sitting there. Oh, you didn't get along with Christine and you were sitting there talking crap to her about me to me all the time. When we went to the Mexican place and we were having problems, I wanted to sit there and have a conversation about our issues and our problems. And all you wanted to do was talk about Christine. And that's exactly what would have happened. And, that, and so it's weird to me that he's so quick to throw around terms, gaslighting, you're trying to lie, you're being deceptive, and you're the, te- the Teflon queen and all that craziness, right? You can call it ice queen because she gave you the cold shoulder player. But <laughs> when push comes down to shove, you just got to recognize who you're dealing with. Now, when we, I would say this. If you're going to say anything about somebody behind their back, and this might be a little bit of subject change, but I just think it's an important note. If you're going to say anything about somebody behind their back, make sure that you're willing and able to say it to their face. And (laughs) you want to be honest with people how you feel about them. Because in this particular situation, you know, if you roll this back a couple years and maybe this is a couple years prior, they have this type of conversation. Janelle throws in her little two cents when Cody goes back and talks to Christine about this conversation, assuming that the two of them are still together. Because like I said, we're rolling it back a few years. All The way he's going to present it to Christine is 
This is all the stuff that Janelle had to say about you. This she was talking crap about you. She was saying that you were A B C D, and these are all things that he was saying. Janelle was just sitting there as a participant. Yeah, okay, yeah. And maybe she was just agreeing with it. But now all of a sudden, it's all the crap that he was saying is the stuff that she was supposedly saying, and why uh, Christine shouldn't trust Janelle. This is a tactic that you can see he uses all the time. Conversely, when people come to you and they want to tell you all the stuff that somebody is saying about you behind your back, you need to take a step back (laughs) and look at them and say, well, that person knows that you're my friend and they would chose to pick you to talk crap about me. When they were saying all this stuff, what did you say? Don't now I get they don't like me and they were saying all this nasty stuff. But what did you say? How did you defend me, or did you defend me? And you could got to get a, a a balance of where the people that you dealing with and and how you should treat them and how you should take them. That's just an aside. The point of this video that I wanted to put out is sometimes you just have to know when to let go. You have to know when to say goodbye. Again, I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. And I know it's something that nobody likes to do, especially if you've invested and you've sacrificed into a relationship. But there's an old saying, don't throw good money after bad. Don't throw good time after bad time. Now, if you chose to spend your time and you've given everything you can give to somebody and you don't get that return, on it, sometimes that happens. That's not necessarily a shame on you. That's a shame on that other person because they didn't realize the value that you brought in. Not everybody is going to recognize your value. Not everybody is going to recognize your majesty. But as individuals, we have to choose to spend our time with people who celebrate our Involvement, our appearance and our presence as opposed to spending our times with people who don't value us, don't see us, don't want to hear us, don't want to improve themselves for our benefit or people who don't take us into consideration. This is what I had to say. I hope you guys like it. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe. This has been my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality and I'm out.